Hi there and welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the second part of our coordinate geometry of the line. Uh, it's based around the core maths modules for A level but is applicable to most other maths boards. Okay, so let's uh, get straight into this. Um, First of all, we're going to look at finding the equation of a line using the point-slope method. And this is another important formula that you must know off by heart in order to access these questions in the exam. And the formula you need is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Um, so there's the formula there. You're going to want to make a note of this in your book. Uh, where y, uh, x1, y1 is a point and m is the gradient of that line or the slope of the line. So um, I'm not going to talk about where this formula comes from or derive it. Um, if you do want to have a look it up, check it out on the internet and we can go from there. Let's just focus on how we might use it. So we have a straight line. Uh, it's got a gradient of negative 2 and it passes through the point 3, 1. We're asked to find the equation of the line. So fairly straightforward here. Um, I'm going to label my point like we did in the last video, x1 y1 and I'm going to substitute. Now we should know that the gradient is denoted by the letter m so we're just going to substitute these values in. The x and the y, or the y and the x as I pointed to there, will just stay exactly as they are. So that implies that y subtract, well y1 is 1, must equal m which is negative 2 times x minus x1 is 3. Now what we're going to do is just tie it up and get it in the form y equals mx plus c or ax plus by plus c equals 0. You can choose. So y minus 1 equals, I'm going to expand this out, negative 2x, negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6 and Finally, I'm going to add 1 to both sides, so y equals negative 2x um, plus 7. So the y-intercept is 7, and it's in the form y equals mx plus c. So all you've got to do, plug it into the formula. Obviously, the most important part here is ensure that you know that formula off by heart. All right, let's take a look at another question here. I need to find the equation um, using the point-slope method again. This time, though, I'm given just two points. Now we're going to need another formula that you should have learned from the last video and that's how to find m. So I need to find m, let's make that look a bit like an m. Uh, so we need to find m and that equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so I'm going to calculate m first and then we're going to go straight for the formula. Um, I'm going to label the points as well. This is going to be x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. It doesn't matter which way you label them, just be consistent. I could call that x1, I could call, sorry, this point here I could call x1, y1, and call this one x2, y2. Just make sure you substitute them in correctly. Okay, so let's get the gradient here. So m is going to equal, well, y2 is the value 4 minus y1, which is the value 10, all over uh, x2, which is the value 1, subtract the value x1, which is negative 3. So tidying that up, we get negative 6 over uh, I'm subtracting a negative number, which is the same as adding, which gives me a value 4. So it's not going to be negative 6 over 4. Let's write it a little bit neater. It's going to be negative 3 over 2. So the gradient is negative 3 over 2. Uh, go back to the formula here. We've decided that um, x1, y1 is these points here. So substitute them in. We get y subtract well y1 is the value 10 so substitute that in must equal m well m is negative 3 over 2 substitute that in 
times x subtract x1 which is the value negative 3 I'm taking away a negative number which is the same as adding 3 but just in case you're a little bit unsure what's happened I'm subtracting and then substitute in that x1 which is negative 3 which is going to give me add 3 okay uh, at this moment in time uh, probably the best thing to do is to multiply everything by uh, 2 because I don't like this you could expand it out um, but it, it suits me to just multiply everything by 2 so I get rid of that fraction there I'm going to try and get it in the form y equals mx plus c and um, so multiplying by 2 we get 2y subtract 10 equals negative 3 times x plus 3 actually it will probably suit us better to go for it in the form ax plus by plus c rather than going for y equals mx plus c do ensure though if the question asks for a specific method or to leave it in a specific form i.e. y equals mx plus c or ax plus by plus c equals zero that you choose the correct one don't lose marks over that all right expand this in now negative three times x negative three x and then negative 3 times the positive 3 is negative 9. Okay, let's take everything to one side. So adding 3x to both sides. Uh, we still have that 2y. And then I'm adding 9 to both sides as well, which will give me negative 1. And that must be equal to 0. Let's make that look like a 0. Okay, fantastic. So that's how we use the point slope formula or the point slope method. Um, right, let's move on. Last part that we need to do. So suppose we have two lines, L1 and L2, and I find out that the gradient of the first line is equal to the gradient of the second line. We've come across this before. That means that the two lines are parallel. The two lines are parallel. That means L is, and sometimes we use these letters to denote parallel, is parallel to L2. You might not see this in the British curriculum, but it certainly was in the Irish one. Uh, L2, L1 is parallel to L2. I'll just write that down there underneath parallel lines. P A R R P A R. I'm having one of those nights we can't spell parallel. P A R. A L L E L. Parallel. And then suppose we have this scenario here where m1 times m2 equals negative 1. So if I multiply the two uh, gradients together, we get an answer of negative 1. That means that the two lines are perpendicular. So L1 is perpendicular, and that's the symbol for perpendicular, is perpendicular to L2. So if the gradients are the same, they're parallel. If I multiply perpendicular, if if we multiply the two gradients together, I'm getting an answer of negative one. They're perpendicular. Now, essentially, what this means, we don't need to do this multiplication thing. Um, suppose we had a gradient. Uh, suppose m one was a gradient of two, and I wanted a, a gradient that's perpendicular to it. I need to multiply by the negative reciprocal. In other words, I'm going to I'm going to flip this upside down and change the sign. So if that's 2 over 1, the perpendicular must be negative 1 over 2. Suppose I had a, uh, a line with a gradient of, uh, let's just make this up, uh, negative 3 over 2, and I want a perpendicular one. Perpendicular, m2 must be, I'm going to flip it upside down and change the sign. So it must be 2 over 3. If I multiply these two together, we're going to get negative 1. So the shortcut way is to, to multiply, is, is the negative reciprocal as such. So flip it upside down, change the sign. Um, okay, let's have a look at a final example and then we'll wrap it up there. Now we've got line A passes through the point 2, 1 and is perpendicular to the line 3x minus 2y equals 6. Uh, I'm just going to change something here. Is bugging me, so let's make that look more algebraic. There we go. 
uh, 3x minus 2y equals 6, find the equation of the line. Okay. Well, so this is the, uh, the line, call it L1 is uh, 3x minus 2y equals 6. I would like to know the gradient of this line here. So let's get the gradient of it. So we've got the line 3x minus 2y equals 6. Um, so to get the gradient quickly, we're going to get it in the form y equals mx plus c, because then we can read off the gradient straight away. So we get negative 2y equals 6 subtract 3. In fact, let me rewrite that a wee bit. Uh, negative 3 x plus 6. So what I've done here is I've just taken 3x off both sides. Subtract 3x from both sides and you get left with this. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. So we get y equals, well negative 3 divided by negative 2 is going to be, a negative divided by a negative is positive. So 3 over 2 x plus Actually, it's not going to be positive because this is positive. I'm dividing by a negative, which means it must be negative, and 6 divided by 2, 3. So the gradient we can clearly see here now, uh, or if you want to call it m1, m1 has a gradient of 3 over 2. m1 equals 3 over 2. Now, if the, the two lines are perpendicular, perpendicular, that means that the line that we're looking for, the gradient, must be the negative reciprocal because they're perpendicular. We can use that fact. So M2, I'm going to flip it upside down, change the sign, negative 2 over 3. So M2 is negative 2 over 3. I have the gradient, I have a point. Now what we're going to do is use the point slope method. So uh, the gradient, let me change colour to blue, the gradient for this particular line, m, must equal negative uh, 2 over 3. And the, um, the point that we're dealing with is 2, 1. 2, 1. So we're going to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Substitute the values in. y minus, well, the y1 is here. And this is x1. So y minus 1 equals m, which is negative 2 over 3, times x minus x1 minus 2. Okay. Uh, let's tidy this up now. I'm going to multiply everything by 3. So we get um, 3y subtract 3 equals negative 2 times x minus 2. And then what we're going to do is expand out the bracket and then get it in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0. So negative 2 times x, negative 2x, negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. Take everything to one side, and we get 2x plus 3y, and then subtracting 4 from both sides, minus 7 equals 0. So this line here, provided we've done everything correctly, <coughs> should be... Parallel, uh, perpendicular to 3x minus 2y equals 6. So it should be 3x minus 2y, 3x minus 2y equals 6. Equals 6. And let's just bring up Desmos here. Have a quick look. So we've gone to desmos.com. Uh, we had 3x minus 2y equals 6 was one of the lines. And then the other line, 3x minus 2y equals 6. 2x plus 3y minus 7 equals 0. 2x um, 
plus 3y minus 7 oh, equals 0. And look at this. Let's just zoom in on what's going on there. That is looking fantastic. And you can see, a little bit thicker there. All right. You can clearly see these two lines here. They look perpendicular, that's for sure. So I'm pretty satisfied that that worked. And uh, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll be back again with another one soon. Uh, all the best and take it easy.